the president please rise namaskar honorable president of india respected sir on behalf of the institutes of higher learning and the civil service academies it is my honor and privilege to welcome you on behalf of more than 150 institutions online today at the outset we all wish you a very very happy new year good health and great leadership for our beloved country we are grateful to you for your constant guidance and support and the new vistas that you have opened for us so your unique engagement with the institutes of higher learning never heard before in the system of india for us we are blessed to receive your deep insights that have enabled us to identify new directions that have helped stretch our imaginations and propel our efforts towards achieving and maintaining excellence your constant presence with us is the illuminated shelter that showers in the light and protects us from the storms today is another landmarking day where you have given all of us the opportunity to share with you our experiences on the extremely relevant topic of youth and nation building our nation which is in a sense the youngest in the world needs to properly nurture the remarkable talent that is available across the length and breadth of the country which is capable of not only transforming the country but leading the world this potential needs to be translated into reality and it is our responsibility in the academia to help our youth attain their true potential for this today sir we seek your guidance thousands of students and young officers from hundreds of institutions participating in this conference are eagerly waiting to receive your message and directions we are also delighted to know that you are very interested to hear from us the various experiences that our young students and probationary officers have had in contributing to nation development 10 young men and women from various institutions across the country will share their accounts with you we hope that this will give you a first hand feeling of what the youth can achieve for our beloved country we will then wait to hear from you your remarks on the way forward for us i personally thank you on my behalf and on behalf of my institution to have so aptly chosen iit kharagpur the first iit which was built on the platform of freedom struggle which as our first prime minister pandit nehru said represents india's urges and india's future in the making we now therefore request you sir to give a welcome address and i will now invite after your address the speakers for a discussion which we believe may chart a future course for this country it is now my honor and privilege sir to request you to kindly address all of us thank you vice chancellor of central university directors of iits nits iiacs and other institutes of higher learning and civil service academies faculty members my dear students i wish you all a very happy and prosperous new year 
late 2016 be a year of achievement and fulfillment for each one of you. India is a nation with a significant young population. Over 600 million people in our country are below the age of 25 years. The National Youth Policy defines youth as those persons who are in the age group of 15 to 29 years. I am, however, not subscribing to any technical definition here. For me, youth is much more than mere age. I place my faith in those who are curious and keen to learn, who are impatient and adventurous, who have boundless energy and drive, who accept the permanence of change and are ever ready to question the status quo and who have the potential to create and harness disruptive technologies for rapid growth. Investment in education, particularly of the youth, in the sharpening of their mental faculties, technical skills, professional competence and awareness about their social responsibilities would be the key to prepare them for nation building. The way we nurture our youth into confident, capable and committed citizens will determine our country's future. I have therefore chosen to speak to you today on youth and nation building, a subject close to my heart. Friends, when we talk of nation building, the first thing we have to think of is what kind of nation we want to build. A blueprint for that cannot be some random sketch, but a grand design based on values, hopes, and aspirations of the people of the nation. On 26 January 1950, we laid a strong foundation by giving ourselves the Constitution of India. It was the Magna Carta of socio-economic transformation for building an inclusive and modern India. We promised ourselves to secure to all the citizens of this sovereign nation justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. The core principles of democracy, secularism, gender equality, and socio-economic equity became the beacon of our journey forward. Friends, let me pause here to take a look at the change that surrounds us. Information and communication technology has made us think, act, and react differently. Distances have shrunk Mobility has increased. Instant communication has led to greater awareness and raised expectations. Consumerism is at its peak. Medical sciences have raised the life expectancy and through better health care improved the quality of life. Disruptive technologies have become the rule rather than exception, putting strain on adaptive capacity of individuals and systems. 
it is in this environment that the youth have to shoulder the responsibility of nation building they must be ready for it through the medium of education and training the education that we impart to our youth must have three clearly defined goals first it must teach them to control their lives which can be done through character building health care and sharpening the ability to learn and use experience for attainment of one's goal second it must teach them to understand life through a study of history science religion and philosophy and the third it must teach them to enjoy their lives through friendship and relationships observance of nature study of art and literature our education system must gear up to develop our youth on these lines friends we must provide value added education to our youth we must inculcate in them the spirit of democratic behavior which calls for an appreciation of the rich diversity of our nation assimilation of ideas and accommodation for divergent or contrary and views the idea of secularism is deeply ingrained in the con <clears throat> consciousness of our nation it has to be further strengthened in the minds of young ones to build a harmonious society gender equality is essential for building an inclusive society unless women participate on equal terms and in equal numbers in the process of nation building all efforts will remain incomplete the occurrence of some unfortunate incidents of atrocity and violence against women in recent years should strengthen our resolve to wipe out any trace of depravity and evil from the minds of individuals respect for women is sacrosanct in our society with its roots embedded in our civilizational values which are reflected in our constitution a spirit of reverence towards women must be instilled in our children in our homes and educational institutions it must guide social conduct of an individual from an early age friends without socio economic equity the word inclusion has no meaning during the last few years we have provided citizens the right to information employment education and food backed by legal guarantees the government has launched programs for financial inclusion creation of model villages and formation of a digitally empowered society we have strong legislations and schemes oriented towards inclusion what we have to do now is to create enough opportunities through their implementation to meet the ambitions of an aspiring in <coughs> india friends the nation which you have to build <coughs> as bureaucrats technocrats scientists 
educators, social innovators, thinkers, and agriculturists has to be an India which will ensure a decent and fulfilling life to all its citizens. It has to be a such India, swast India, a digitally empowered India, educated and skilled India, and a tolerant, harmonious and peaceful India where the last person feels a part of the narrative of the country. India needs novel ideas and creative solutions to overcome challenges in the fields of education, skill development, sanitation and healthcare, financial inclusion and service provision. A successful innovative idea is one that has scalability. How can we skill one million of our youth every month? How can we gainfully employ trained manpower in our industry? How can we provide health care services to each rural household? How can we meet the financing requirements of small farmers and entrepreneurs in villages and small towns? How can we make public utility services more accessible, inclusive, and transparent? The answers to these questions lie in creating a strong digital <coughs> backbone that can lead to efficient service delivery putting a mobile phone in the hands of a person living in a remote village and teaching him to use it to access information, knowledge and services is a great act of empowerment. It gives true meaning to the word inclusion. For building India of our dreams, we all have to work together to develop an ecosystem which will bring together innovation, empowerment, and financiers, which will recognize merit and give primacy to science, technology, and innovation, a facilitative and supportive environment for free play of all creative forces, be it in government, corporate sector or academia has to be created. The government has just launched Startup India to promote startups and offer incentives for entrepreneurship and job creation. The over 4,500 startups make India the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. The higher economic institutions have a clear role to play in refining the entrepreneurial abilities of their students. Teaching of entrepreneurial studies as a course in our institutes will be a good beginning. Educational and civil services institutions have to inculcate in their students and training a sense of social responsibility. Some suggestions for enhancing their engagement with the community are assign them to teach in nearby government schools for at least one hour per month. Deploy them to undertake community-based projects to uplift the condition of people in the vicinity. Assign them to identify problems faced by villagers and work on innovative solutions which blend modern technology with local practices. My young friends, tomorrow belongs to you. 
your commitment to national goals will determine the direction of our future growth as you get ready to embark on the journey to fulfill your dreams let me share with you my own little checklist for nation building we work together towards nation building if we produce more than we consume we give more than we take we work more than we idle and we think more than we talk you may just find this list useful thank you jai hind respected sir thank you so much for firstly redefining the concept of youthfulness and for your clarion call for the youth to arise and awake for nation development to build the new india sir it is my privilege to share with you 10 young men and women's experiences on their path to nation development which will help give you a glimpse of something which the academies and the higher educational institutions are trying for this country first i will invite sri yash pratap singh a student of the indian institute of technology gandhinagar honorable president it is with extreme elation i shift before you my experience on youth and nation building sir to propel the nuances of development which is essential for the building of the nation the youth in india must be precisely aware of the term development as a concept apart from understanding the technological and scientific significance of the term development it is necessary for the youth in india to adopt a holistic approach and reflect on the socio economic as well as the political aspect of the term keeping this perspective in mind for the youth to broaden their thinking capacity we at iit gandhi nagar as a part of the course curriculum undergo around 20% of the course work in humanities and social science sir we need to understand the importance of social policies and technological advancement which is why i think there is a prerequisite to motivate youth in engineering streams to pursue both technical as well as courses with social and literary implications at a time sir when the world is infested with an aspiration to become smarter in both virtual and real settings it is the responsibility of our nation to embed the roots and traditions of the indian knowledge systems this will allow us to leverage this technological progress for social innovation and advancement sir to participate in nation building youth also needs to understand the nation and its pearls which invites an urge a curiosity to explore to this effect sir i would like to share the explorers initiative of our institute which provided an opportunity to 15 of our colleagues to travel as many as many as 15 states in different groups in different parts of india and that too on a meager budget hence body mimicking the experiences and a journey of a common man this kind of exploration sensitizes the youth towards the nation and its nationals hence positions the well to drive the process of development sir with an optimistic view of the future i believe that we the youth of our nation will craft a nation as per our shared vision and dream we shall engage in building a technologically fueled innovation driven socially concerned nation thank you thank you yash i will now request sri shopto roshmi bandopadhyay from the indian institute of engineering science and technology shipur west bengal to share his thoughts and experiences honorable president sir it is my privilege to represent the second oldest engineering institution in india in its newest reincarnation as iiest shipur the energy vigor and zest for life possessed by you can be used for building our nation in the 21st century the central purpose for advocating youth leadership is to support the youth to engage in innovative activities for ensuring a modern self reliant india in its true sense for this the young minds of our country need to come together to work as a team with utmost dedication for solving the global challenges faced by our nation and society i urge all my friends to give research a chance in india the research that should give practical creative and innovative solutions for eradicating these problems today technology may be the mode of admission in premier institutions in india but as students we must try for ingenious technologies to improve lives 
In our institution, we are encouraged to contribute in research and development, particularly in energy, environment, like manufacturing robotic sweeper cleaners, advanced materials, healthcare, communication, transportation, like solar d rickshaws, and so on. We are working hard to provide arsenic-free drinking water in rural Bengal, imparting skills to unemployed youth, and helping schools and organizations in installing solar panels. In the modern world, the expectations towards engineers have undergone a paradigm shift with an increased social responsibility to apply knowledge for the national development. However, the most important asset of the youth is their innovative and creative mind, which is the root of nation's development and progress. I would like to conclude by quoting Swami Vivekananda, who said, never say no, never say I cannot, for you are infinite. Thank you. Thank you, Shakta Rashmi. I will now invite Ms. T. Pranitha Reddy, a student of the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Naipur, Hyderabad. Honorable President of India, a very good afternoon. It's a great honor for me, T. Pranitha Reddy, to represent the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Naipur, Hyderabad, on this topic, Youth and Nation Building. I would like to start off with an instructive quote. It is really surprising how much the youth can do when they want to and how much they can't when they don't want to. Youth forms a major dynamic segment of our nation. Their energies, resourcefulness, character and orientation they define the pace of development as well as the security of our nation. I am privileged to be a part of that nation which enjoys the world's largest youth population. And this is the reason why other nations are eyeing our country as a source of technical manpower. So, I strongly believe that uh, the youth can contribute three-dimensionally to the progress of the nation. The first one being education. Empowering the youth with proper quality education, which is not only focused upon cognitive intelligence, but also imbibed with other holistic experience, with special attention to different dimensions like moral, ethical and spiritual values is necessary. We all know that a major proportion of the people who reside in villages are illiterate. The main reason being utter ignorance and lack of proper initiative to guide them in the right way. So here, youth can be of immense help. They, they can take up this responsibility upon their shoulders and they can light the candle of knowledge in every nook and corner of the country. The second one being development. In order to shift our country from the list of developing nations to developed nations, the agenda of science and technology has to be at the forefront in building the nation in a democratic as well as in a constructive way. There are certain constructive plans like Make in India, which helps in progressing the youth entrepreneurship and also motivates the people to bring laurels to our country. The third one being sustenance. If the youth make up their mind and if they work in close unison with the working class people, then they can definitely hold certain responsibilities within their hands. If the youth are given proper education and motivation in the right way, then they can spearhead the progress of our nation. I would like to conclude it with a fine line. We can't build the future of the youth, but we can definitely build our youth for the future of the nation. I wish you all a happy and prosperous year ahead. Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, Pranitha. I will now request Ms. G. V. Pallavi Sravantika, a student of the Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development, Chennai, to share her experiences. Honorable President, sir, I'm immensely grateful for endowing me with this opportunity. With reference to nation building process, the youth should collectively create an identity for the nation and undertake efforts for the unification of the citizens. The thrust should be on building human capacity for a happy and fulfilling life. For this, <coughs> the youth need to model self-love and respect diversity. They must inspire others to become more confident in their own selves. The youth need to utilize positive psychology and positive youth development concepts to enhance human capacity for a greater quality of life. They need to recognize that every individual has a unique set of talents, abilities, and assets. For encouraging entrepreneurship, the Institute has introduced Masters in Social Innovation. Further, I wish to state that youth should engage positively in various civic activities in addition to formulating policies, and a formal system of youth parliament should be put in place 
and function effectively at all regional levels. The selection and election for the youth parliament should start from the grassroots level, which is village to mandal to district, then to the state and national levels on a minimum criteria. We need to foster resilience, spirituality, self-efficacy and belief in the future and provide recognition for positive behavior. All of this could be possible with the five C's. <coughs> Competence, confidence, connection, character and caring. When the five C's are present, the sixth C, contribution, is realized. If our youth can implement these ideas, I strongly believe our nation will move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Pallavi. We will now move over to Sri Atal Vihari Vajpayee, Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management, Gwalior. And I will request Sri Fatihab Alam, student of that institute, to share his experiences. I, Fatihab Alam of ABV, Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management, Gwalior, wish one and all a very good afternoon. When we look around in the country today, we see a multitude of ubiquitous, young and cheerful faces. These youthful souls are not mere dreamers, but achievers, adventurers and, and ambitious like never before. This is the 800 million strong community of our citizens below the age of 35. The power of this youth to transform the society and build the nation to glory lies in its tremendous energy and the impressionable nature of their minds. Their receptive intellect can be molded as per the demands and needs of the time. In a nutshell, the younger the mind, greater is the impact. The world is changing fast. The gifts of the 21st century, the internet and IT, have revolutionized the way in which the youth think and act. Technology has made the youth the most active section of the society. Today, they have a voice and constantly share their ideas on social platforms. Today's youth are born managers and problem solvers. They are not just job seekers, but job creators too. Many startups by young entrepreneurs have captured large segments of the domestic market. And this is just the beginning. The digital youth is no longer worry about the past. In fact, it has been innovating in India and developing in India. I am confident it will now be the biggest driver behind Make in India. We as a youth have dual responsibility on our shoulders. First, to carry ourselves ahead, skill-wise and morally and second, to motivate and take our fellow youth along. The moment we have strong foundations of ethics and values, the nation will automatically prosper. Also, the youngsters are increasingly opting for a career in youth building. Even here at IIITM Gwalior, we tutor and mentor the underprivileged children from surrounding villages every evening in academic soft skills and personality development. As Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam said, all of us do not have equal talent, but all of us indeed have an equal opportunity to develop our talents. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fatiha Walam, for your spirited sharing of views. We now move over to the northeast region of the country, National Institute of Technology, Agartala, and Sri Gaurav Kumar will present his experiences to you, sir. Honorable President, respected directors, teachers, and my dear friends. It gives me honor and proud privilege to share my views on youth and nation building. As myself as a youth, my ideas and experience will be of great help. Youth represent the most dynamic segment of the population, the future of our nation, with about 65% of India's population falling below 35 years of age. India is among the youngest nation of the world. This is lot to harness, to develop, to manufacture, to innovate. The youth, his or her talent, ability, energy, enthusiasm can lead us a long way in the process of nation building. And with this, it won't be a long before India becomes a world financial power. When it comes to innovation and contribution to the development of our nation, the youth never leaves any stone unturned. To mention 
NIT Agartala has opened a center of innovation for undergraduate students to harvest the fresh young minds to manufacture and build products. As a result, NIT Agartala is the only NIT who has filed 13 patents in two years. And young minds at our campus have produced and delivered many innovative concept, concept out of which hybrid social auto rickshaw and integrated motion and light sensor were developed to save power. These products are also shown can be produced at high volume and with high reliability. Ultimately, youth will build youth. And the best part is we believe we can and we will. Before I end my speech, I would like to mention and hope that each of us think global and act local. Thank you. Jai Hind. Bande Matram. Thank you, Gaurav. We will now move over, sir, to some of the civil service academies. And the first from the Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy, Dehradun, Sri Ranganatha Ramakrishna Y, who is currently a probationary officer, will share his experience. Good afternoon, Honorable President, uh, dignitaries, students and staff of academic institutions, and my fellow probationers. Before joining Indian Forest Service, I worked as a Prime Minister's Rural Development Fellow in rural Chhattisgarh. The main challenge was to ensure sustainable development while preventing the youth from veering towards left-wing extremist ideology, realizing that uh, by developing skills and by providing viable livelihood opportunities to the tribal youth, the menace of left-wing extremism can be tackled. The government of Chhattisgarh has instituted right to skill under rights-based approach and also established livelihood colleges in various districts. The viable livelihood options can be collection, processing, and uh, value addition to non-timber forest produce and traditional bamboo crafts and other forest-based activities, besides various others. We think that um, high employment generation through market linkages can only happen when the gulf of digital divide will be bridged so that the rural youth with adequate skills can be a part of India's startup story. As stated by you sir, earlier, India is currently the third highest startup ecosystem in the world. However, most of them are concentrated disproportionately in urban areas. There is a need for dispersed growth of startups, especially those catering towards rural areas. There is a need for convergence between digital India, startup India, and skill India, so that uh, youth of India can participate inclusively in holistic nation building. India is currently at, an, at its inflection point and it needs the energy, dedication and talent of the youth to harness its, to fulfill its potential as a developed nation. We feel that government of India should act as a facilitator to harness the potential of the youth. Thank you, Honorable President. Thank you very much. We now move over to the SVP National Police Academy, Hyderabad, where probationary officer Ms. Niharika Bhatt will share her experience. Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, and friends from around the country, with the benefits of demographic dividend on our side, India has an incredible opportunity to tap the young and dynamic human resources for nation building. In my journey of becoming part of the IPS fraternity, I have come across youth from different socio-economic backgrounds with the common aim of seeing India develop and prosper. We all are extremely excited about working at the grassroots levels in different parts of the country and being part of the Indian Police Service. Policing is one of the areas where active involvement of public in day-to-day -day affairs helps make the system more efficient. Community policing has been a focus area of the Indian police, and the technological connectivity of today's youth can add new dimensions to the public police interaction. Connectivity through Digital India campaign will enable officers to interact with youth and crowdsource ideas to make policing more citizen friendly. Outreach programs for the youth can help give positive direction to their energies by not only making them aware of their rights, but also of their duties towards the country. Along with this, it is the responsibility of young officers like us to provide the Indian youth with a secure environment conducive to their intellectual and physical well-being. 
Being custodians of our future, opportunities for youth should be actively created by the government machinery to exchange ideas and keep them more involved in decision-making process. This way, India can confidently move into the future with youth power driving the engines of our national development. Thank you, sir. Jai Hind. Thank you, Ms. Bhatt. We now move to Nagpur, where Ms. Shishti Chaudhary, Officer Trainee at the National Academy of Direct Taxes, will speak to you, sir. Good afternoon, Honorable President of India, all the dignitaries, and participants present in this conference. For me, the role of youth in nation building includes two ideals, achieving professional excellence and fulfilling aspirations of citizens for development. During my previous career, comprising engineering, MBA, and a job in the corporate sector, I wanted to contribute to the nation by creating wealth. Later, I realized the importance of reaching out to the public at large. This led me to join the civil services. NADT has provided me with the platform to work on both the ideals. I believe that, as the leading resource earner for the government, the IRS has a key role to play in the future of India. Going beyond the mandate of tax collection, we young officers need to educate the future taxpayers to make them partners in nation building. This would also help us curb the generation of black money by instilling a sense of pride in the youth as taxpayers. For this, we are going to launch a tax education program for the young students in Nagpur. I, as a young officer, strongly believe that our role must expand from tax administration to playing important role in national security matters. Working towards the second goal of citizens' development, we have set up a social welfare cell at NADT with holistic support of all the officer trainees. We are providing support for nutrition, skill development, and women empowerment for the youth in orphanages for boys and girls. Such initiatives would help us be grounded to the social needs of the underprivileged. I am confident that I, as a young public servant and also a responsible citizen, would continue to contribute and motivate other youngsters towards nation building as my mission. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chaudhary. The last speaker who will share his experience today with you, sir, is Sri Anish R. from the Indian Institute of Mass Communication, Delhi. And sir, and all participants of the conference, a very good afternoon to all of you. On behalf of Indian Information Service, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, and Indian Institute of Mass Communication, I would like to extend our deepest gratitude for providing us with this wonderful opportunity. Yes. Sir, I would like to bring to your kind attention that we have about 21 development journalist professionals from 13 countries and students of mass communication attending this conference. Sir, as part of our induction training, we had a lecture series on nationalism. And the main theme that came out of it was development and development alone is the path to guide to bring the misguided youth of a nation to the mainstream. This idea was further cemented as we had the first-hand experience of visiting an erstwhile Naxal-affected area of Lalgad in West Midnapur district, as well as our forays into northeast of India. Schemes like Rural Livelihood College in Vasta, youth development through sports in northeast, and proactive participation of youth in decision-making and implementation in West Midnapur has been instrumental in bringing about a change in these areas. So these schemes are shining examples that can be emulated elsewhere. For any process of development to even take shape, good communication channels are absolutely imperative. Any a slight miscommunication or even a disconnect between the youth and the mass would bring about an impediment to the entire process. And that is where the role of communicators becomes very important. Sir, so, this room is filled with the future communicators of our nation, from young, bright Indian Information Service officers to energetic, budding journalists to aspiring media professionals. Young communicators with a mandate to bring the dreams, aspir aspirations, and desires of millions of young people to the forefront. Young communicators with a mandate to create an informed citizenry and empowering and bringing 
ensuring that the youth will participate in the task of nation building. So that is what our responsibility is. Responsibility to be truthful, to be honest, to be transparent and service oriented. And together, I'm sure we can all work together to making our great nation help achieve the ideals of the Constitution of India. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anish. Sir, you must have now got from 10 short glimpses what the 600 million people under 25 that you just mentioned look forward. We therefore look forward to you for your guidance on how to take the path forward. I will therefore request you, sir, to give your observations and concluding remarks, which we can take forth in our journey forward. Thank you, Director <laughs> IIT Kharagpur, Thought. I first express my deep appreciation to all young participants, numbering 10, who have made their very interesting and enlightening observations, how they look at nation building, creating a nation out of the cradle of the oldest civilization of the world. The first point which I entirely agree which has emerged from some observers that we must have the leadership of the youth, yes. That is one of the most important factors in building up the nation. And youth provide leadership always. They are the harbinger of the changes. All revolutions which brought mammoth changes in the world, revolution in a system, revolution in the thought process, revolution in the way of life, Youth are the harbinger of bringing those changes. I'll just give you a small example from our contemporary history. Before the birth of the Indian National Congress, which was considered, it was conceptualized by a couple of British administrators and policy makers who were responsible for Indian administration. One of them was Octavius Hume. Before he launched his program, the formation of the Indian National Congress, he wrote a letter to 50 graduates, young graduates of Calcutta University in those days, in 82-83. And there he mentioned exactly the point which some of you have tried to drive at. That leadership of the young generation, youth are needed to bring any change in the status quo. Therefore, there is no two opinion on it that you ought to provide the leadership. I am happy that some of the professional and academies of training of the officers have participated. Forest Academy of Dehradun, Police Academy of Hyderabad, Nagpur Institute of Direct Taxes, and Institute of Mass Communication. In fact, you are chosen by the nation as the leaders you get tremendous opportunity as young civil servants, whether in the administrative cadre, whether in the police cadre, whether in the revenue cadre, when the responsibility of communicating, you are the leaders. The amount of responsibility you are to discharge on your young soldiers, In any other system or organization, you will find that much more years are needed 
to have the level of the responsibility where the young civil servants and after the completion of probation, when they enter into their respective jobs, they enter into. So there is a system. We shall have to nurture it. The third point on which you have emphasized is true to the core, that technology. Technology brought the changes everywhere. All major changes in the world, in different walks of life, have been brought by the technology. Sometimes I wonder as a student of history, that how is it? Only with 12,000 soldiers coming from abroad, in 1526, Babur could capture India and establish the rule of almost 300 years of the Mughals in a vast land like India. Answer lies in the technology. Because he knew he had the technology, his soldiers had the technology to use firearms which Indian soldiers did not have. They fought with their own bows and arrows, swords, spears, etc. Naturally with gun, these weapons are ineffective and useless. Examples could be multiplied, but the simple point is that we must emphasize on technology. And as I am emphasizing on improvement of quality in education, particularly in the higher technological, higher education institutes of higher learning, and equally emphasizing on giving more and more emphasis on research, on innovation, and then suggesting that each institute of national importance, not in the technical term, but in its scope of functioning and its own dimension. Each of them should be the nucleus, should be the incubation center, should be the organic link between local innovators, innovation, research, and also close link with industry. Because Mere for academic purpose, research is not adequate. It must be made marketable. And there comes the role of the industry. I would like to tell you another story, very interesting. In the early days, another third quarter of the 19th century, when Germany began its industrial revolution, and Germany was united under great statesman, Prince Bismarck. He introduced a large number of laboratories were established by the German industrialists. As Chancellor, he wanted to visit one of them. While visiting, he asked the director of that institute, the 12 professor, what is your output ratio? Professor said, sir, out of 100 rupees investment, my 99 rupees investment it may not produce any result. But I am not worried about it. My investment of 1 rupee, which will produce adequate results to compensate all the losses I have been carrying, and looking at the Chancellor, smilingly said that you will get enough revenue to run your state. So that is, it's not merely story, but it is absolutely necessary. Technology. I do not know whether I am running out of time, but surely I am deeply appreciative of your interacting 
responding to some of the suggestions and questions which I posed. I wish to have such interactions more frequently. And once again I assure you, as per the practice, this is my interaction with you at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the academic session, I would like to have another interaction with you. Thank you. Let the new year be really meaningful to you. Let it be the year of achievement. Let it be the year of fulfillment. Somebody has commented that not only dreamer but achiever. Before becoming achiever, you must also have the dream. You must also have the vision. And you must have three C's. Commitment, confidence and character. If you have that, nothing can prevent you. You will move onwards. Whole world belongs to you. Thank you, my young friends. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, directors, and other senior administrators of the central universities, IITs, NITs, and other institutes of higher learning. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir, not only for sharing your views, but giving all of us an opportunity to give our thoughts, which you have listened so intently. It is now my pleasure to invite my colleague, Professor Jawaharlal Kaul, Vice Chancellor, HNB Garhwal University, to give a vote of thanks to you. Thank you, Professor Partha, Honorable President. Sir, it's my proud privilege and honor to present vote of thanks. But before I do so, let me wish you a very happy new year and greetings from students, faculty, and staff of HNB Gadwal University, which is located in Picture C, Himalayas. Sir, on behalf of the students, faculty, and staff of Central Universities, other academic institutions of higher learning, civil services academies, and on behalf of all of us present here, I express our profound gratitude and sincere thanks to your good self for sparing your valuable time with us. We are fortunate to have a humble president like you who is an epitome of humility and humanism and who believes in direct connect with people. Our interaction, sir, with you at Rashtrapati Bhavan at various occasions reflects that as much as it reflects challenges and vision for higher education in India. Indeed, sir, we always look forward for an opportunity for such inspirational interactions with you. Thank you for your time, wise words, and benevolence. Sir, I believe today's lecture on youth and nation building symbolizes the roadmap for dynamic role which our youth can play in the economic and social development of our country. As you have rightly said, that India is the only country having the largest young population. They are the future leaders and entrepreneurs of our country. Simultaneously, higher education sector has seen a phenomenal expansion since our independence. You have very rightly remarked that the creation of human resource pool has become a critical focus area in our socio-economic agenda. Also, we cannot afford to produce workers and professionals who fail to meet the skill required by a growing economic system. To garner this resource pool, sir, we need an educational system which is qualitative, innovative, and cycle-oriented. You have very rightly remarked, sir, on various occasions that society can improve and excel only through excellence in education. As highlighted in your address today, a highly proficient and robust educational system would enable our youth for a better living and an appropriate place in global society as well. As remarked by Mark Lum X, I quote, sir, education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. Indeed, poor education would lead to downfall of the people. Thank you very much, sir, for your inspiring lecture. I am sure that your wise words and counsel will motivate a huge generation of our youth to be dynamic, constructive, and highly visible 
in our economic and social progress. Sir, as visitor of central universities and other institutes of higher learning, you have provided a sagacious leadership and a dynamic vision to higher education and learning in India. You have also embarked upon new programs of inclusiveness, mobility, and creative pursuits. You have all along held a belief that education, and particularly higher education, is a construct for future growth and progress of our country, as well as for social transformation. Consequently, these institutes have to embark upon robust programs which will meet the aspirations of a large body of students and stakeholders. Indeed, sir, today's address will go a long way in inspiring all of us to work towards that goal. Sir, you have also at many occasions expressed your concern with higher education. I quote, the quality of education has a direct correlation with inclusive growth and development. Emerging economies facing the challenge of meeting developmental aspirations of their citizens must build an education system comparable to the best in the world. A serious discourse on how to address the quality concerns in higher education should therefore begin at the earliest, unquote. Sir, we would like to reassure you that under your dynamic leadership and your vision for India's future educational system, we will do our best to make our education system a symbol of excellence, inclusiveness, and innovative one. With these words, I would like to thank you on behalf of all of us for your time, wise words, and counsel. Thank you very much, sir. I would also like to thank Srimati Umita Paul, Sheri Suresh Yadav, and officers and staff of Rashtrapati Bhavan for their untiring efforts in making this program a success. They have all along looked after us very well while at Rashtrapati Bhavan. Thanks very much to them also. Thanks are also due to Professor S. V. Raghavan of National Knowledge Network and all the members of NIC video conferencing team for their wonderful work. We appreciate and put on record our gratitude to all of them. Thank you one and all. Jai Hind. Ladies and gentlemen, may I request you all to rise for the national anthem.